Welcome back to another video on the basics of making 2D games in Unity. In this video we're going to be looking at uh, using consumable objects. So for instance we have a, a uh, potion over here in our level and we'll pick that potion up and add it to our inventory and then we'll look at how we could um, have a key on our keyboard that we push that says use a potion if you have it uh, and then we'll have our inventory check to see if it has a potion available and if it does we'll use it and then remove it from our inventory so that's kind of an overview of what we're looking to add into our interaction and our inventory system here in this video so let's go into our scripts here well first let's look at our potion so this is called potion blue right now and the potion has been set up as an interactable object already uh, in the system that we've been building in the previous videos we have it tagged as an inter object we also have the circle collider with a trigger that's a trigger and it's got a radius big enough that we can walk up next to it and that's the range in which we can interact with it uh, and it's got the interaction object script that's got the inventory uh, mark checked on it so um, that's pretty much all set up and ready to go so what we need to do now is add in some functionality where we can actually you know have a control that says use a potion and this potion may maybe it's a health potion uh, it's going to have some sort of an effect in your game so let's go into our script here in our player interact script right now we have this set up for if we use the interact button we can add an item to our inventory and that's how this potion is set up right now it's set up as an inventory item that gets added to our inventory we're going to need another button that is for using that potion so let's go down in our update um, down below where we're doing the one for interacting and let's set up a new control here so this will be um, use a potion so let's just check for another input so we'll say input get button down and we actually need to go in and figure out which button we're going to use so let's go into unity and take a look at that so our buttons here our input manager by going to edit project settings input and we're already using fire one uh, and I think fire two for something else you've got this interact button here um, so we might need to add a new button in and uh, we've got lots of some of these are set up for controller uh, but for instance maybe this fire one button here we want it to do kind of something similar just going to specify a different key so we can actually duplicate these if I right click fire one I can duplicate the array element and I get another fire one right here okay so now all I have to do is change its name so here's the new fire one let's make this uh, the the use potion button so let's call this use potion let's um, map this to the P key why not P for potion so we'll just say if we press the P key on the keyboard that's going to be a positive response for us everything else is already set up for keyboard and mouse so we're good to go so we just set up a new control a new axis or a new control in here called use potion set to the P key so now in the script here I can tell it the button I want is the use potion remember you have to spell it capitalize and space it out exactly the same here as it was in the input manager otherwise it's going to tell you that you haven't set this control up all right if we get a click on the P key the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to check the inventory for a potion All right, and then we're going if we have uh, the potion then we'll want to use the potion apply its effect and then we're gonna want to drop out the potion from our inventory so we're gonna remove the potion from inventory it's gonna be a one-use potion here Right, those are kind of the steps that we need 
uh, to do. Okay, so first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a way of identifying this potion uh, uniquely from all the other objects uh, that are in our inventory. We already have it with a tag that we want to leave to make it an interactable object so that our interaction object uh, system works with it. So we're going to either have to give it a unique name, so we're going to name all our potions exactly the same, or we may have to give it um, a variable in its script that says that this is a potion. Uh, for now, why don't we um, put a variable in the script because sometimes if you spawn things in, uh, it's going to put the word clone after the name and that can sometimes make a mismatch when we're checking for names. So let's go into our interaction object script here. Let's add another um, public uh, variable in here that's going to tell us what this is. Okay, Some way to identify, is this armor, is it weapon, is it a potion, um, all of that. Okay, So let's just kind of put that up here somewhere, another public. Let's make this a public string and we'll call this item type. So what type of item is this? Okay, so this will tell what type of item this object is. Okay, so now we've got something called item type here. So let's save that. We'll go back out into Unity. We'll click in on our potion here. And then uh, we can tell it. So let's call this a, um, let's see, we probably might have different types of potions. Let's make this a health potion. So we'll just call this health potion. All right, so it's a potion and it's a health potion. So now we'll be able to check the item type of this item when we go to use a potion to see if this is our health potion. All right, so we've got that all set up with an item type. Okay, so now that we have that in our player interact script, now we have to check inventory to see if we have a health potion. So we already um, have a function out here in our inventory script that is for finding an item that we're sending in a game object. Now this is a little different because we're not going to send it the object, we're going to send it the item type. So that's going to be a different um, a different type of, of item. So probably right now the simplest thing to do would be just to make a separate function that finds items in our inventory by their, by their item type and not by the actual game object. This is where we're trying to match up exactly. Um, maybe we had more than one potion and we're trying to find is this the exact potion like we did with the key in the door video. We're going to make a new public function here that's going to return a game object and we'll call this then find item by type and it's going to take in a string that is going to be our item type and then when we, if we find an item of the type that we bring in, we'll return that, that item as a game object to what called it. So what we're going to need to do here is uh, a lot like what we did up here in our add item or in our find item. And that's going to be just a loop through the array. So let's do a for, a for loop. And we'll go through inventory.length. And then as we loop through, we're just going to ask if inventory. Uh, at the current position I. Now first we have to check to see actually if there's anything that even exists in this slot in our inventory. If nothing is there, if it's null or empty, then we want to skip it. So we're going to ask if it's not equal to. Uh, and then we're just going to check for null. So first let's check to see if this slot in your inventory at index i, if it's not null. So if it actually contains an inventory item, then let's do another check to see if this item is of the type we're searching for. So then we're going to do another if statement here. Again, we'll say inventory 
at i, and now we have to, at, from this item, we know it exists, so we have to get its script, its interaction object script. So we're going to say get component, and the component we want is the interaction object script, and from that script we want to get the item type variable. And then we can check to see if, if this item's item type is equal to the item type that we are looking for. That's this right here that we brought in here. Okay, So we're asking if that is equal. If they are equal to one another, then we found an item of the type we were looking for and we're going to then return that item to uh, what called this function. Okay, so we'll use our return and what we're going to return is inventory at the i position. Um, this is a game object array so that inventory at the i position will be a game object so we can return it uh, through our return type here to what called it. Okay, now if we didn't find it, so if we get all the way to the end of our loop, here's where our loop ends. So if we get here, then we went through the whole entire loop and item of type not found. So what we're going to be doing here is we'll just return a null value, which means we didn't find anything, so we're going to return uh, just empty. Nothing was found. All right, so that's our function over here in the inventory script that we can call if we want to find an item by type. In this case, a health potion is what we're looking for. Uh, so now we go back over to our uh, player script here. And uh, here's our, our uh, input. So now we're going to check for a potion. So now it's just a matter of calling that function and seeing if we get something back. So since the function returns us a game object, we want to be able to temporarily store that. So let's make a game object variable here um, called uh, potion. Okay, and we will set that equal to uh, our our uh, function call here. So we're going to go to inventory, which is our link to our inventory script. We're going to then say in inventory, go ahead and run find item by type. And then we have to, as a string, give it what we're looking for. We're looking for a health potion, just like that. So when I say this, it will go to my inventory script. It will run find item by type. It will send it the word health potion. Inventory over here then will store that type right here in this variable. It'll loop through its array. It'll look to see if we get a match. If we do, it will return that object to us. If we don't, we'll get a null. Alright, so we have that back, and then what we need to do is um, we need to check next to see if we got anything back. So now we're going to do the check if potion not equal to null, then we know that we found a potion, and if that's the case, let's put a, a, a set of brackets in here to go around this next part. So we're going to go ahead and apply the effect, such as adding health, which we're not going to do here in this example uh, because we're focused more on the inventory management part here. And then after we apply the effect of the potion, we want to make sure that potion gets used up and removed from our inventory. So then we will uh, move on to the next step, which is removing the potion from our inventory. So back here in inventory, let's make another function. It would be a public, and we're not going to return any um, anything from this. It's going to be a void, and we're going to call this remove item. This is going to remove an item from our uh, inventory, and we're going to send it the game object, which is going to be the item to remove. All right, whoop, wrong brackets there. Okay, so uh, we're going to call remove item. We'll send up the game object item. Then again, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the array and we're going to find that item in our in our inventory array. 
and then we're going to remove it. So again, we can actually just um, copy out our loop here because we want the loop inventory length. Now this time we're checking to see if I, these, these are game objects, so let's just take this out. All right. So we can just modify this like this. So we're, we're looping through the array until we hit the end of it. Each time we loop, we're checking to see if the item at that position in the array is the item that we're looking at. We're comparing game object to game object. If we find the item, then we're going to remove it. So we found the item, remove it. And that's pretty simple. All we have to do is say inventory at the current position i equals null. That basically will, will delete whatever is in that current slot in our inventory. It'll make it go away, make it empty. And then of course we want to break out of our loop. And then we can um, have it do a debug. Let's do the debug first here so that when it breaks it doesn't ignore this. So we'll do a debug just to make sure that it's actually doing what we want it to. And we'll say um, item dot name and then we'll say was removed from inventory that'll give us some feedback that says that we found it but right now if we can remove item we'll send up the item we'll search the array until we find a match when we find that item we'll set it to null That'll wipe it out and make that an empty slot in our inventory again. And then we'll just tell ourselves that we actually removed the item. So that should do it for this video on how to use an item from your inventory and then remove it when it has been used up. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you find it helpful. As always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below or talk to me in person if you happen to be sitting in my class. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.